Now let's go to the letter E of new subdivision problem. The data represent actual prices. So this has been already uh, worked work out. So we're going back to the data, the square feet and the dollars. So for letter E question, find SS dev and SS rest. Okay, so this is these are the, the squares of the are the sum of the squares of the de uh, deviation and the sum of the squares of the residuals. Use the results to calculate the coefficient of determination and the correlation coefficient. Do your answers agree with the result from part A? So first we are going to get the SS dev. And we know that uh, the SS dev is just the deviation from the mean of the given Y value. So because it is uh, very complicated to uh, get, I mean, to present to you uh, by doing manually the SSDEV. So I, I am presenting the table, the tabular uh, computation of our SSDEV. And uh, remember that this is our mean, okay? So the deviation from uh, the, the mean, okay, of the uh, table for Y is one hundred ninety three thousand two hundred dollars. Okay, and our SS or or our Y hat is equal to sixty seven point six three five eight X plus twenty six thousand one hundred thirty nine point five zero zero seven. So using those values, we could get our Y minus the mean or the deviation and then we have the squares of the deviation so following the data from here these are the complete tabular data so the sum of our uh, squares of the deviation would then be three billion three hundred eighty three million six hundred thousand dollars Okay, and how about our SS rest? So let us take a look at the SS rest. So taking a look at the equation, okay, we, we use the equation for this one. And we tabulized, uh, we tabulated rather, the uh, residual for each of, of the data for this, okay? So what we got are these values. And getting SS rest is equal to 268 billion, uh, million. Is it million? Right, okay. 293,685.7563. Okay, and our correlation coefficient is R is 0 0.9595, which is a pretty strong correlation. And uh, we have shown you that it agrees with part A. Letter F, why is it reasonable for there to be more than one data point with the same X value? Okay. Now look again at the data, okay? For the same X value, for example, 2,500 feet, you have a different uh, value which is $189,000, $207,000, and for 2,600 2, square feet, you have different Y value also, okay? So what does it portray or what does it mean? Two, so, two houses can have the same square footage, right? And remember that, in reality, you know, if you're going to buy a house and you have the same uh, a square feet or the same area, let's say, you notice that one of the houses that you you are inquiring about has this higher value than the one, uh, the other one with the same uh, the same area. But you know, this is actually uh, the price is actually also influenced by by factors such as the location of the. The, lo the location of the houses in the subdivision. So sometimes the one on the front end costs more than the one in the rear end, okay? And uh, the relationship between square footage and price is only 
statistical and it's not in force meaning statistical it has uh, been on a, a survey and price is influenced by factors other than square footage so it's not only about the square footage because if it's about the area then we definitely should have the same price for the same square feet but as I've told you there are other factors such as the position or the loca location of the yeah, the house the two houses with the same uh, what do you call this uh, lot area they will have sometimes different prices okay so uh, subdivision if you're going to buy a house then you would notice uh, those you know discrepancies about the uh, prices of the house when you get into the subdivision and inquire yourself so this is the end of uh, problem number two now let's go to problem number three gas tank problem so Lisa is driving a car and Lisa car fills up her car's ga gas tank and drives off so this table shows the number of gas left in the tank at various numbers of miles she has driven so this is the table of uh, the miles and the gallons that he she spent for the number of miles okay for the number of miles when 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 your miles is six that is your independent variable then the number of gallons or the gallons of the tank that was left okay is 16.7 of course she drove to a near uh, distance so meaning that for for the distance given the number of gallons should be uh, a lot more right so if he, if she continued to drive for 22 miles then the number of gallons on the uh, fuel tank left is 15.9 and if she drives until 44 miles the number of gallons would be 14.8 15 miles 14.5 and uh, for 60 miles that she has driven there would be 14.0 gallons of, ta of of gas left in the tank letter a run a linear regression on the data write down the linear regression equation and r square and r how do these numbers tell you that the regression line fits the data perfectly Okay, and why is R negative? Okay, so the answer to that is you know, when you run a linear regression data on your calculator, it will give you an equation of y hat equals negative 0.05x plus 17. And the coefficient of determination is 1. Okay? and your r is negative one which means that it is a perfect fit remember right uh, we have discussed that if r is negative one or r equals one that's like a hundred percent so the the data and the linear regression function fits perfectly okay they, they are equivalent with each other so as you can see here, your R square, your coefficient of determination is one, and then your coefficient of or correlation coefficient is negative one. But why is it negative one? You can see that the number of tanks, or I mean the number of gas, gallon, the gallons of ga gas left in the fuel tank of Lisa's car is decreasing as time goes by as she drives more miles then the number of gallons is decreasing okay uh, pertinent to the number of miles she has driven so therefore the function should be negative right it's not increasing the number of gallons is not increasing in the fuel tank okay so r is negative because the remaining gas decreases as the distance driven increases so that's the logic there okay letter b calculate the coefficient of determination and the correlation coefficient again directly from the definition by calculating s's dev 
and it's a stress. Okay, so we're going to do a table for this time. So we're, we're going to present two tables actually. Okay, let me have this for the for the SS dev for let us do this on the other slide. Okay. So what are the details that we need in this computations? Let's have y minus y hat here and let us have y minus y mean. Okay, or the deviation here and the residuals here. And then let us have the square of the deviation and the square of the residual. Okay, but first we need to find the mean. What is the mean? The mean is just equal to the sum of all of these y values divided by how, how many n do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 divided by n. So our y or our mean is equal to 15.18 gallons, right? That's 16.7 plus 15.9 plus 14.8 plus 14.5 plus 14 divided by 5, okay? Because there are 5 data. Okay, and now we could get our y minus the mean, so which will give us 1.52, 0 0.72, negative 0 0.38, negative 0 0.68, negative 1 1.18, and the square of this uh, deviation is 2. Point 3104 0 0.5184 and then we have 0 0.1444 and 0 0.4624 1.3924 how about the y minus y hat if our x is 6, okay, what is our y hat? So if our x is 6, our y hat is 0. Point, okay, let me turn my calculator on. 0 0.05 times 6 is equal to, okay, so this is, 16.7, so this one would be 0, and this would be 0, 0, 0, 0. So if these are 0, then all of your uh, residual square would be 0 also, right? Okay, so what are you finding here? Calculate the coefficient of determination and the correlation coefficient again, directly from the definition. So. What is our SS dev? Our SS dev is taken from the, the sum of the squares of the deviation. So that would be 4.2, okay, sorry, that's 4.8, Okay, while our SS rev or SS rest will be taken from the squares of the residuals. The sum of the squares of the residuals is obviously zero. Therefore, our R square, R square is equal to the SS dev minus SS rest. So that's 4.828 minus zero over 4.828. And it's equal to one. And then square root of one, so that's our coefficient of uh, correlation coefficient, okay? That would be negative one. Negative one because the data decreases. The 
gallons of uh, fuel left in the fuel tank decreases over time and over the distance driven by this car. That's why our R is negative 1. And because our R is negative 1, it fits the data perfectly. Therefore, it gives the one that we get for 3A. Okay? They are consistent. Let us see. Plot the data and the reg regression equation on the same screen. How can you tell graphically that the regression line fits the data perfectly? So when plotting the data, this is the plot of our data. Okay? So you can see that this is, these are our points. And these points fit perfectly as with the regression line. So if, if you will have a back to back or a, a same screen presentation of the data, again, then you will see that both of the regression line and this uh, plotting of the data points are on the same line. All, they are all on the same line. So the, the data fits perfectly the linear regression line that we have run through the graphics calculator. Okay, letter D, according to your mathematical model, how much gas does the gas tank hold? How many miles per gallon does Lisa's car get? So since this is uh, using, or this is asking about how many uh, gallons or how, how much gas does our fuel tank hold at the beginning, then we should get the value of our y when x is equal to 0. So when x is equal to 0, that is, the car is not moving, then the regression line, the best fitting regression line is negative 0 0.005, am I correct? 0 0.05, okay? So we have an excess of 0. This is 0 0.05x plus 17. Now when x is equal to 0, so that would give you y hat is equal to this one becomes 0 and initially you will have 17 gallons of tank or 17 gallons of gas in a tank. Okay, so how many miles per gallon does Lisa's car get? So we're talking about x here when our y is equal to and the number of miles per gallon does Lisa's car, car get. So we are going to analyze the table here. So we're going to have some, uh, what do you call this, some analysis. So this is how many miles? This is 16 miles. Okay, and the number of gallons spent is 0 0.8. Am I correct? So in that case, we have 16 miles. It's the number of miles per gallon is equal to 16 miles divided by 0 0.8. So this is 16 divided by 0 0.8. That gives us 20 miles per gallon on the average. Okay. Okay. Show that your mathematical model predicts that the tank is empty after 340 miles. Because number this number is found by extrapolation, how confident are you that the car will actually run out of gas after 340 miles? Well, that's a big question. Well, at first, let us uh, compute for uh, what you call this, y hat of, so this is letter f, y hat of uh, number of miles is 340, okay? So that will give us negative 0 0.05 times 340 plus 17, okay? So what is that? We have our scientific calculator here. So negative 0 0.05 times 340 plus 17 will give us 
zero. But how confident are we that this is, you know, uh, the, the car will actually run out of gas after 340 miles? Well, we are not very confident because as, uh, as the question asks, this is outside the data, okay? The, the x values, so meaning we couldn't really predict what's, what's going to happen. And aside from that, aside from that, you know, some driving conditions might change. There might be a storm, there could be some problems along the way. So these are factors that cannot be neglected. Okay, so therefore we are not very confident that uh, the car will actually run out of gas after 340 miles. Maybe it could be around 330 miles or 335 miles, okay, or 320 miles. Well, it depends on the condition of the driving and also other factors such as uh, the road that you are uh, uh, driving onto. Okay, so these are very important factors. So this completes the solution for this problem, gas tank problem by Lisa Carl, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and also hope you are enlightened with how to solve the uh, problems like this re revolving on the SSRS, SSDEV, the regression line, and other than that, the computation for, for the tables to get the SSDEV and SSREF and the correlation coefficient and the coefficient of determination. So thank you for watching.